And in Lagos State, the government has announced plans to revert to full lockdown if there is no improvement in adherence to the public health guidelines. The government noted that in the first week of the easing of the lockdown, there had been a repetitive and flagrant disregard for the earlier announced health guidelines, a move that could frustrate the government's efforts to contain the virus. We still have with us Adini Yukunu, public affairs analyst. Thank you for staying with us and for your patience. Thank you very much, Ivan. So from your observation, yeah, yeah. has there been an improvement in the level of compliance since the threat was issued by the state government days after the lockdown was lifted? Um, there can't be compliance because there is no bargaining chip by government to the people. Um, the entire Africa spends 0.1% of our GDP on palliatives. Uh, Europe spends 7 to 8% of our GDP, and Japan spends 11 to 12% of our GDP on palliative. Um, it is people's right to move about. It is people's right to leave. It is people's responsibility to cater to the needs of their family. So if government is trying to restrict people, for instance, government must put certain things in place, uh, bearing in mind that many people earn their daily living by going out every now and then. So I expect to see more uh, disregard to the um, caution, to the stay-at-home order, to the fact that people should try and not gather, because oftentimes uh, people must actually survive. As much as I'm not supporting this, please, I'd like us to understand, the compliance will still be reduced because government has actually not done what it should do. We are aware of all that happened around the palliative or the supply that government has given. So if a country has actually been exploring uh, crude oil for the past over 60 years, yet for the lockdown of three weeks it couldn't provide for our citizens, then it's a question mark on the responsibility of government towards our own people. So I think that I expect to see a higher level of disregard um, and let me tell you, the prisons may not be able to take a lot of people because people would not want to steal, would have to go out to earn their living. So well, if you want people to comply, then give them reasons to comply because it's important to do so. So do you think this lack of compliance might uh, make the government go ahead and institute a lockdown? Uh, the considerations that led to the lifting wouldn't be enough to keep them from going towards that direction? I like to say that for the majority of Nigerians, action oftentimes is what gives birth to reaction. Many Nigerians didn't see government as being sincere in taking care of them. So after you actually told them to go out, because many of them have suffered from the lockdown, they believe that you never can tell we have to rather survive than die. So I think that um, it's rather sad because according to the numbers, it keeps going up. But when people consider how much they have to do to take care of their lives and their families, then they feel we have to weigh the one that is priority. If the coronavirus that they feel they cannot physically see is affecting their health, but the hunger that battles them daily is what they could experience, they'd rather go and tackle what they can see directly that is affecting their lives and families than the one you have to undergo tests for. It is rather sad. I am I'm not in support of it, but that is the reality of the, of the so situation. What, what would be some of your recommendation on how government can encourage better compliance to social distancing and other uh, measures? <clears throat> okay. Um, one of the things would be that for mm -hmm. people who actually have to go out or people who have reason to gather, all right, let us just look at how we can get to the peak of this by you staying at home. I'd like government to lock the states and many other states where the numbers are increasing down. But I think one thing that government can do to lock us down again is to be sincere by saying, okay, we know these are the number of people in Lagos. These are the number of people in these places. I am giving such and such an amount with support from the federal government anyway that for the period of maybe another one or two weeks that will lock down because we don't want any kind of crisis on our hands, we'll give you people this to stay at home, we'll give you people this for you not to violate so that we can tackle this. That is the only way. So if government continues to tell people, go ahead and um, stay at home, as little as nose mask, Lagos State could not give the citizens for free. 
nose mask. Whereas in crossover states where they have not recorded any case, nose masks are given for free. So that is one thing. Government cannot give even nose masks that cost 100 naira. Let us be sincere with ourselves here. All right. Um, I want to take your thoughts quickly on the move by the federal government to get um, the Madagascar herbal cure, uh, to review it and for the possibility of using it in Nigeria, and the, the rejection by medical personnel that this is not a wise decision. What's your position on it? As quickly as possible, please. I get that line. I didn't quite get what you asked me. I'm sorry. Okay, I, I'm I asking well. about the Madagascar herbal cure uh, for COVID-19. Yeah, oh, oh, the federal oh, oh, government oh, yeah. has okay, said, yes. yes, they are going to review yes. it and see if they can use it. So my question is, our health practitioners are saying, this is not a very good decision, but the government has already done it. So what's your position on this uh, decision of the federal government? I have to say that many of those who have spoken on that particular COVID organics from Madagascar, they don't have the least understanding about it. And I think that it's important for them to do their researches properly. There was, there's a doctor called Dr. Jeremy Yagi. He's from the Democratic Republic of Congo. He worked with the WHO as a researcher, and he was the one that wrote the protocol for COVID organics. That simply means that has been properly researched, as far as I'm concerned, and he has actually put together all of the combinations necessary for them to use what is called Artemisia afra, which is a plant found in the island ocean as well as in China and has been known to be very efficacious. So let us stop all of this politics of our health. Science must learn to tell the truth. That is a properly researched herbal medicine. So let people stop speaking. It is either they are poorly informed, it's either they've not read enough about it, it is the fact, or it could be the fact that they perhaps are colluding with people don't for not for them not to tell us the truth. I have, in fact, as a matter of fact, that COVID organics, the combination with which COVID organics was put together, is found in a research paper of pharmacological sciences held in Berlin in 2016. That is something done by an African. So what is wrong with all these medical practitioners? Okay. Is it that I, they're not I, informed enough? Please. I, I, I would want to take you up on the question of the medical practitioner because I'm, I'm not one. I would love to take you up on it, but there is no time. I'll have to say thank you very much for your thoughts. We'll do this Thank again you for soon. having me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.